The purpose of this WDSE WRPT six episode series, Opioids Crisis in the Northland, is to start a conversation. Good evening, I'm Kristen Bakke. Thanks for joining us. Breaking news tonight coming out of Douglas County, Wisconsin. We're learning that 13-year-old Jamie Kloss has been found alive. We now know that the Superior YMCA has been evacuated and will remain closed until further notice. We have also been notified that the, the Namaji Golf Course has been evacuated. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Edward Moody. And I'm Kristen Bakke. And we are live now with team coverage tonight from Campaign 2018. You can see our reporters there live at the different camps across Minnesota and Wisconsin. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Edward Moody. We have some breaking news out of Superior at this hour we want to tell you about. Uh, authorities say an explosion rocked the Husky refinery plant. Multiple injuries have been reported at this time. Here's a live image from that scene. It was a clearing scene and it has just gotten much worse. When I was down there earlier, I could hear a lot of explosions, a lot of subsequent explosions when the smoke first broke out and I saw some flames shooting into the air. None of the explosions were as bad as the first ones that were described to me when neighbors and people inside at the time told me that it shook. One of the people inside at the time told me it felt like a semi truck hit the building. And I actually do have a resident with me who is uh, actually lives down the street, Matt Lavallee. And Matt, you arrived home from work to quite some surprising news. How has it been since you got home? Uh, pretty unnerving. You know, it's kind of scary. So I grab my dogs and get out of here. We've got the rest of the family is gone already. So we'll just get the get the dogs and hopefully we can everybody's safe and we can come back tonight. And we could just see that plume of smoke get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then getting back after the meeting, the traffic was horrific and they had already started trying to get people to evacuate. We wanted to share with you this map that we received from the city of Superior. This is specifically showing what they have outlined as that three mile radius around the plant there at the center of what looks like that bullseye. We have some images we want to share with you that have come in from the website all spillable um, unspillable excuse me dot com um, as we scroll through these images let's just go through them slowly guys there's one image right there as you can see that smoke and it looks like gosh I don't know if that's a flame um, popping up on the other side of that building but it looks like flame coming from uh, the other side of that building from the Henry plant let's look at some more of these photos we we've got in from unspillable.com at 10 o'clock this morning obviously we had an incident at the refinery uh, the initial incident caused a, an asphalt uh, spill and that's what you see burning right now is and that's why it's so black because of the asphalt burning right now uh, can, at this time there were no fatalities fortunately we did have uh, I believe six individuals were transported to the hospital uh, but again no fatalities uh, Leanne you were there as um, really almost all of this has been playing yeah, I've been out. At multiple places. Yeah. You know, started off um, at Essentia, St. Mary's, at St. Luke's, trying to see how many people were uh, transported there. Sure. And as we heard earlier, only one was transported to St. Luke's and multiple to St. Mary's. All right, everyone, focus very closely on your screen. What you're seeing right here is this is security footage from the plant, and I am told that this is the moment that the explosion happened. What you are seeing right here is the explosion, possibly the explosion that happened just after 10 this morning at the Husky uh, Energy Plant in Superior. So if we stay on this image for a minute because I want to talk about what we're seeing here. You can see the massiveness of that fireball, um, that fire plume and smoke plume coming out of whatever that is, that container that had that asphalt yes. leak. So that's where, um, at this point, we, we are assuming that that asphalt leak took place right there, and that is where the explosion happened. 
Well, Edward, I heard Dave talking about the wind and the change of wind that might be happening in the future. But I do want to mention one thing that has happened since the last time I went live. As you can see, I'm going to have my photographer zoom in. You can see that the, actually the, the cloud of smoke has been going to the right now and then and then still going to the left. But initially it was just going up. So now it's spreading over to the right. So that plays a little bit into that wind factor. Um, do want to mention it is asphalt that is burning. Fire, but right now the fire is out and in a, in a few hours we will be able to start rescinding the evacuation. Folks should be able to come home and sleep in their beds tonight. 13 year old Jamie Kloss has been found alive. She was found in the town of Gordon, Wisconsin, which is a little more than an hour north of Barron and about 40 minutes from Superior. We have a timeline here of the last nearly three months that Jamie has been missing. It all started on October 15th when Jamie's parents, James and Denise Kloss, were found murdered in their home in Barron, Wisconsin. Mary McGuire spoke to Jamie's aunt, Sue, tonight, who said her niece was currently in the hospital. WCCO quoted the aunt, saying, quote, there was rumors earlier today, and I prayed and prayed, and they come to not be true. And I just shut myself totally down. I thought today was going to be the day, and then I find out two hours later that she's found, and I just can't believe this. One of the races we are watching closely is the 8th Congressional District race here in Minnesota. On the Republican side, St. Louis County Commissioner Pete Sauber. On the Democratic side, former State House Representative Joe Radinovich. Kristen and Edward, hundreds of people are packed into this room here in Proctor at the Blackwoods, all anxiously awaiting updates from Fox News polls, all for the 8th Congressional District race, and everyone in this room is all rooting for the Republican candidate, Pete Stauber. Nationally, this will be an important race as the Democrats have picked up at least 10 seats so far in the U.S. House um, and are hoping to pick up more. We will see what happens in the 8th Congressional District, but now let's turn to Kristen Vaki with CBS3 political analyst Tony Sertage. Hey, Kristen. Hey, Edward. Thanks. And yes, I am joined now by uh, former Minnesota uh, House lawmaker Tony Sertage. Thanks for being with us tonight. Pete Stauber with a 55%, uh, percent, Joe Radinovich, 41%, and Ray Skip Sandman with 4%, and that is 29% reporting. Edward, back to you. All right, thanks, Christian. Wanted to tell you real quick, CBS News has declared that Democrats will seize control of the U.S. House in this election, and the Republicans will maintain their control of the Senate. That from CBS News Network. Probably the first 15 years I worked here, uh, we rarely, uh, rarely uh, saw opioid overdoses that required uh, naloxone. And now we see it regularly. I've been an addict most of my adult life. I guess how I became addicted to them, I never really cared for pills or anything, and that's kind of how everybody builds up to it. I got a prescription for Oxys when I was, I want to say 23, after a car accident, and I learned that you could smoke them, and I, I never knew that was a thing, and I tried it, and I liked it. And, Opiate addiction is so much different than other addictions I've had in my life. It was, you know, I dabbled with stuff and then became a meth addict and stuck with that. That was easy to walk away from. The first time I tried an opiate, I wanted to do it every day for the rest of my life. And just, then you're physically addicted to it. And the withdrawal is so horrible that you just don't want to stop. I miss, you know, Ben every day. And yet, you know, this is, um, this is my, you know, attempting to make his life mean something. He saw a souvenir that I had, which was basically an ore that I had gotten, excuse me, from a, uh, uh, from a twins game. And it was a, it was a pal. Oh, I didn't think this was going to happen. Um, it was, it was, um, Tom Kelly Knight, and you know, Tom had great success with the, with the twins, and his motto was, everybody grab an oar, we're in the boat. And it was, it was basically that, that philosophy that you know, we all need to participate and work together to get to where we need to go. The solution is our community coming together and working as a team. Every one of us grabbing an oar to keep our boat afloat.